Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here, and today we are going over some very peculiar changes that have been announced via the dev blog. In particular, some regarding the Michelangelo, the upcoming dockyard ship, and everyone's favorite copy pasta German battleship, the Scharnhorst 43, who has gone through a very odd set of changes here in the past couple of dev blogs, and one that I missed, and we're going to be talking about that today. But also, if you haven't already subscribed to the second channel, if you do and comment on the first and only video up on that channel right now, you will be entered into a contest to win one of two premium ships, anything from tier two to tier nine, anything that's available for me to purchase for you in the premium shop. All you gotta do is subscribe to the second channel. Link to that will be in the description down below. Just leave a comment in the usual format. You'll see a bunch of comments there already on that channel. And the goal was a thousand subs and it's looking like you guys are gonna get the second channel there quite quickly because you guys are awesome. I thank you for that. So make sure you go ahead and enter into that. But also, if you want to read along as I read aloud from the dev blog today in the description down be below, you can also find the link to the dev blog down there as well. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get on into it. So dev blog says changes to test ships, close testing 12.10. Based on the testing results, we're applying changes to Stored 43, Scharnhorst 43, Tianjin, Francesco Furicio, Michelangelo, Rhode Island, Independence, Yorktown, Exus, and Beern. Essex. Essex. Oh, lottie. Can't even English tonight properly. All right. European Destroyer Stored 43, Tier 7. Main battery reload time increased from 3.5 to 3.7 seconds. Bit of a nerf there to her reload. Torpedo parameters were changed. Reload time increased from 75 to 90 seconds, but her range was increased from 7.5 to 10 kilometers. And at tier 7, that's a nice buff to your torpedo range there. Those are some very, very usable torps there at tier 7. And now the Schoenhorst 43. If you don't know the Schoenhorst, the Stored 43, that's basically just, just them already announcing that they're going to have a Battle of the North Cape event, which was the last voyage of the German battleship Schoenhorst. We did a whole uh, cinematic video on that here on the channel a couple of years ago if you want to check that out as well. So the changes. Secondary gun parameters were changed. The maximum HE shell damage of the 105mm guns was reduced from 1200 to 1100, but the fire chance of the 105mm guns is being increased from 5% to 8%. Now that's only on paper a 3% buff and it may not sound like that much, but when you have, of course, you know, multiple 105mm guns like the Sean Horse does, that's quite the decent sized buff there for their fire chance. And the 150mm secondary guns are getting a similar treatment as well. Their alpha is being decreased from 1700 to 1500 and their fire chance is being buffed from 8% to 12%. Now that's pretty interesting there. We'll talk about that why here in a second. We gotta go back a bit and talk about some changes to Shawners Sh 43 that I missed. So a couple of dev blogs ago, the sigma value was increased from 1.8 to 2. That's a huge, huge buff to the sigma. If you don't know, sigma is the number that determines essentially the pattern that your shells are going to leave the barrels of your guns when you fire. And a higher sigma value means that you get more consistency out of those guns. So a buff from 1.8 to 2 for battleship standards is huge. So that means your guns are going to be much more consistent. And the AP fuse was normalized. Originally, it had a delay of 0.01, which basically means it's short fuse AP, which would be good for dealing with, you know, light cruisers, or really any cruisers that are around tier 7 because they're pretty squishy. But when it comes to dealing with other battleships, especially with the caliber of gun that we're talking about with Sean Horse with those 280 millimeter guns, not really going to be able to get it done. But they've changed it from 0.01 to 0.033 seconds, which is normal. So it's going to have normal AP again. Cool. They also added an engine boost consumable that gives you a buff of 15% to your speed for 180 seconds, reloads in 90 seconds, and you get three charges of that. Then they went and normalized the repair party. Before it had a 
bit of an improved repair party where it would reload in 60 seconds and regen 337 uh, HP points per second. But now it's it's normal. 80 second recharge and a 281 uh, HP restoration tick per second. So a normal hero. So what they are doing with the Shauna's 43 is that they've kind of realized that Sean Horse really isn't the secondary gun platform that you want to go with. I mean, even right now, the thing is she has the 105mm secondaries, which like at tier 7, if the thing would only ever see tier 7 games would be pretty fine. But it doesn't. It's a tier 7 ship. It's going to get double up tier to tier 9 all the time. And from tier 8 match matches on up, 32 millimeters is king there, right? Like, that's the last major armor threshold in the game. When you get to tier 8, all the battleships have 32 millimeter extremities with, you know, a couple of exceptions here and there that are, you know, more battle cruisery. So that's the magic number that you need to get your secondary guns across if you want to get good, consistent secondary performance. Sharnhorst can do that if you take IFHE for his secondaries, but of course with IFHE, the trade-off to the increased um, penetration is that you lose half of your fire chance. Now, on most battleships that have to take this, like the Palmer, that's not really a huge deal, because she still has, you know, bigger guns, 15-inch guns, which, yes, are small for, like, Tier 9 standards, but they can still get the job done. Sean Horse just has outright small battleship guns, right? Like 280 millimeter guns. That that is tiny in the battleship world, even by tier seven standards. Which means often in Sean Horse you find yourself having to fire HE and not really bank on the alpha because German HE alpha is pretty anemic, but you're banking on the fire chance of, you know, starting some fires on the enemy ship, and that's how you're gonna get your damage in. But of course if you take IFHE there goes your damage through fire chances. So, they realize that if they want to release a secondary focus Sean Horst, it's got to have good fire chances. Because if not, you're going to have to build into IFHE, and then there goes your main gun performance, and it's going to suffer miserably, right? So, what it appears to me that they're doing is that they're retooling it to be a secondary ship. You're going to be focusing on your fire chance. And then they give you the engine boost where you can now run down the target ship. Even though Shornos is already pretty fast, you know, the range isn't really there. Unless they buff the range for secondary guns tremendously so. It's something like, you know, tier 8 secondary range, which they're not going to do. Because the thing can also see tier 5 ships, and that's going to be an absolute murder fest if they do that. So they give you the engine boost where you can now run down the targets that you want to run down with the Sean Horse 43, buff the fire chance on the secondary guns now where they're going to be pretty good uh, fire starters, and then they normalize the guns and get, make the guns more consistent to where you can actually use the main battery guns, and there you go. You don't have to give up your fire chance. You've got a fast battleship with the engine boost and a high fire chance on your secondary guns. Keep in mind too, you can, you know, you, you can take um, the commander skill to get another percentage to those secondary guns and of course you can take the flags as well to buff the fire chance of those secondary guns as well. So that appears to be what they're going for with the Sean Horse 43 from my perspective at least. So looking like it's going to be an interesting secondary ship but we'll see what happens with that. So moving on from Sean Horse 43 uh, the next round of changes is coming to some Italian boys. So, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself there. The, we had to get through the Tianjin first. So, the main battery guns were changed. The AP shells damage was buffed from 5,550 to 6,350. The AP shell penetration will now be reduced. It will become more similar to Riga. The shell velocity was buffed as well. Like, it's looking like they gave it the Riggins guns. Not from 965 meters a second to 995 meters a second. And, yep, yep, literally the next bullet point here. here. Ballistics change. Shell trajectory will now become more arcing and more similar to Riga. So, it's it's literally a Riga clone at this moment, it seems. Alright. Add defensive AA uh, fire and hydroacoustic search as well. They did remove the fodder consumable from the uh, ship as well. Uh, and you have a choice between DFAA and Hydroacoustic Search, like Riga. 
Uh, the spot. Oh, interesting. The spotter consumable is replaced with high precision spotter consumable, which will have the following characteristics. It's active for 55 seconds. It increases the range by 10%. And reduces the main battery shell dispersion by 10% as well. Reloads in 200 seconds and you get three charges of that base. I believe that's pretty similar to the um, consumable that the, well, the, the, the plane that the Japanese battle cruisers have. Although I don't think they get the range buff. I think they just get the um, accuracy buff. I could be wrong and I'm sure someone will shout at me in the comment sections if that is the case. All right, now on to the Italian boys. The Francesco Furicio, the Tier 7 Italian cruiser. The main battery was reduced with reload from 12 to 11 seconds. The sap shell ricochet, ricochet parameters were changed. Ooh. Guaranteed ricochet, ang ricochet angle reduced from 85 to 80 degrees. The angle at which check for ricochet, ricochets is made is reduced from 80 to 70 degrees. Ooh, they buffed the pin angles on it. That's going to be interesting. All right, and our boy Michelangelo, the upcoming Tier 9 Dockyard Cruiser. It's unfortunately not as good of news as we're getting from the Ferricio. The secondary battery parameters were changed. Maximum shell damage of 90mm guns reduced from 2,000 to 1,900 damage. The sap shell damage of the 152mm guns were reduced from 3850 to 3650. So, ouch. The 90 millimeters got a 100 damage nerf, and then the 152s got a 200 damage nerf. Sad. And then they reduced the splash damage of the sap secondaries by 40% to submarines. Big sad. I mean, hey, when you release a commander skill that buffs the secondary guns, unfortunately, this is this is probably coming down the road too for a couple of secondary cruisers. Like, I'd imagine the Napoli is probably going to get hit with a nerf hammer eventually because of how good her secondaries are now with the additional range. So, unfortunately, I, I kind of thought this was coming with the new secondary skill. So, we'll keep our eye on the, on the Michelangelo. It's still, in my opinion, looking like to be a pretty promising Tier 9 cruiser, even though it's got that really wonky gun layout. But, that's going on with it now. And the Rhode Island, the upcoming American Tier 10 battleship. This is the 16-gun... Uh, um, battleship. So the HE shell parameters were, in, were changed. The maximum damage was increased from 4750 to 5000. And then the fire chance were increased as well from 22 to 31%. Big buff there for the Rhode Island. And if that's not enough, she got a buff to her heal. So the restoration of hit points after receiving damage to the parts of the hull increased from 50 to 60%. So big buff there to Rhode Island. And then the support carriers in Beern have an interesting change to them. Due to an issue where patrol fighters' planes lost track of their targets because of limited visibility radius, the patrol fighters of the ships below have been adjusted to spot and keep track of enemy planes at a longer distance. This change will not affect their, limiting, their, their limited spotting of ships. So the independence, uh, the visibility range was increased from 2 to 4.5 kilometers. The Yorktown from 2 to 5.5 kilometers, the Essex from 2 to 6 kilometers, and the Beern from 2 to 4.5 kilometers. Okay, and yeah, so they just note that um, stored Rhode Island and the support CVs changes will be live during update 12.10. The rest of the changes are going to go live in update 12.11 there at the end of the dev blog. So, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, patrol fighters, they're supposed to... I mean, you're giving up spotting of ships to specifically murder planes. And the fact that, you know, they weren't even going after the planes is kind of dumb, right? They're not doing what, what you know, you're giving up that ability to spot to do. So that makes perfect sense in my mind. I mean, hey, their support CVs, again, they should be good at what they do, right? And having your interceptors not intercepting yeah that's kind of dumb right so there you go all right so some interesting changes and um i'm really gonna see what direction shonors 43 is going to wind up in uh hopefully it will be pretty decent but again that remains to be seen let me know what you guys think in the comments down below remember to go subscribe to the second channel and enter into that contest for one of those two uh premium ships Hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.